Hello, and welcome to this ICAW Practitioner Business Advisors webinar on time to outsource, save practice time and money with a modern solution in association with KPM. My name is Nyla Khan and I work in the practice team here at ICAW. I will be your host for today's 60 minute session. With an ever challenging recruitment market and firms looking to drive efficiencies in areas such as accounts production, could now be the right time to explore outsourcing practice work to another company, thereby freeing up time to focus on advisory work. Our speakers will be discussing this today. We very much encourage you to get involved with today's webinar. You can submit your questions to us at any time by typing a question into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screens. We have allowed time at the end for Q&A, so please keep these coming in. Our speakers today are Tashir Patel, co-founder of KPM, and Robert Grant, head of customer experience from Inatalk Global. Welcome, Tashir and Robert. Hi, Nyla, how are you doing? <clears throat> well, thank you. Thank you, Nyla. Hello, Tish. Hey, Robert, nice to see you again. <laughs> Tashir, co-founder of KPM, uh, works. KPM is an online accounting platform designed for accountants to accomplish accounting and tax services while collaborating with clients and staff alike. It has a team of 40 people who currently support over 1,700 UK firms, servicing 300,000 SMEs through the platform. Robert, Gar Robert Grant has worked in the accountancy profession for over 30 years, most recently being head of accounting at Crunch, one of the largest cloud-based accountancy practices in the UK. We will hear from Robert in the second half of the session. So to share, to kick us off, what do we actually mean when we talk about outsourcing in the accountancy profession and in the context of running a chartered accountancy firm? Do we have a clear definition of what outsourcing can mean for our firms? Um, yeah, so let, let's start with the basics, Nyla, um, with regards to this. Outsourcing um, effectively means a role is is to to outsource means a role needs to be um performed by an external supplier um one that's rather than your staff or yourself um who's actually carrying this work out so effectively when you're outsourcing accounting or bookkeeping or any other function you're actually giving it to another firm or a managed service um, company to actually carry this out on your behalf through a contracted um set of documents which have actually um, set out the rules and regulation of what services you're going to be providing for them. It could be um, based over here in the UK, or it could be based offshore um, anywhere globally from that perspective. So what you're saying is I could outsource anything, really? Well, ironically enough, um, prior to um, 10 years ago, um, starting KPM, I actually uh, finished university and I started my first business, which was an IT outsourcing company. Um, and um, with regards to that, so that was back in 2004, which we started it, um, and we had over 350 field engineers nationwide. Um, what happened, and working with major um, OEMs and manufacturers in the UK to carry out their work, what we found was um, during 2008, during the, um, the down, um, the, the crunch, um, our workload had massively spiked um, due to obviously uh, companies still needing to get their, um, their work carried out. Um, but obviously cost, cost, cost was the major, major driver to um, um, pushing it forward with, with an outsourcing provider. And I know you've, you have done some slides for us. So did you want mm. to share those while we're talking? Yeah. Can you see the slides now? Yes, we can see them now. Okay. So um, if I start from the beginning, it's just... Uh... So obviously, um, thank you for the introduction, Nyla, for, for Robert and myself. Um, just wanted to give you a bit of background to who KPM is, um, who I am, and obviously we can, and, and how that actually fits into um, outsourcing as well from that perspective. So I gave you a bit of background from myself when I finished university. I ran, uh, I co-founded first um, outsourcing company, um, and we took that to a point where in 2012, um, we were acquired um, by a logistics firm. Um, following that, I'd actually sat down with my accountant 
and looked at the makeup of his business and the tech stack that he actually had. He had one thing for bookkeeping, another thing for payroll, another thing for accounts production. Um, let's not even get started on practice management back then. Um, um, I, I actually came back to him and we're, with an idea and a vision of providing everything instead of in a desktop based environment and independent um, to provide everything within a cloud based suite environment where not only can he collaborate with his staff members, but also with um, uh, the end customers as well through the same same platform. So the idea there was you'd be able to capture the data a lot quicker from your um, clients bring that into the system, into the KPM ecosystem, um, connect all the, uh, the raw data up so that actually you can actually then get to the point of uh, submission and finally collaborate with them as well. So not only with your staff members, but with the end customers as well, with the end product of, um, of the, uh, the uh, documents that you've actually created. So that was the idea of KPM. Um, we, uh, our vision and mission has always been to empower the accountant. Um, we believe that actually, um, being the professionals of the industry, you need to focus on what you're good at. Um, the industry is going through a massive change at the moment and an overhaul, but at the same time, the prevalence of globalization happening, um, you need to be in a position where you've got the flexibility to actually provide your work elsewhere or outsourcing um, for, that, for that matter um, to potentially somebody else to allow you to focus on the more profit-making areas of your business. So that's, that's the MKPM. As you've mentioned, obviously, we now sit with about 1,700 firms UK-wide. Um, many of them actually use outsourcing companies as well um, to actually carry out their work. And it simplifies their processes um, to, to kind of run it as a, a bit of a machine, a well-oiled machine, shall we say. Um, just a quick one about the topics we're going to be discussing today is now maybe the optimum time to actually carry out outsourcing. Um, potentially parts of your practice and what services that would take um, to, to, to carry out. Um, we're going to be also discussing about keeping your practice data secure. Um, so, and how obviously cloud suites can, um, can allow you to do that um, and work with outsourcing companies. We're also going to be discussing about why it's important to have watertight procedures and how you can work with outsourcing companies through systems to be able to um, align with your practices going forward. And um, once we pass over to Robert, um, we're going to be obviously discussing about the common misconceptions of it, um, how outsourcing can reduce your risk um, to your practice. We're also going to be discussing about the uh, profit um, making areas of um, outsourcing as well for your practice and how it can also save time and efficiencies um, for, you, for yourselves as well. So we've touched a little bit on what outsourcing might be and you sort of gave quite a broad definition that you know really you can outsource anything but if I'm right. thinking about my accountancy practice where would I start and which areas of my practice would be the most suitable for me to start looking at outsourcing? Well we've <laughs> we've spoken to our community about this um, quite heavily one area that comes up very often is payroll um, we understand a lot of clients actually take this on on the basis that you want the rest of the work as well. Um, the margins within, within the payroll service can be quite minuscule. Um, if not, sometimes it could be a bit of a loss maker, but actually you can spin this um, and flip it on, into, uh, on its head by outsourcing that potentially to a partner who can carry this out on your behalf. And you can turn this area into much more of a, a as I mentioned, a well old machine to, to continue to uh, allow you to provide that service, but at the same time, turn it into a bit of a revenue generator for you as well. On the flip side to that, if you've got an area where you're running very, very well, it could be a case that you're hitting a bottleneck. Um, so there's nothing stopping you from outsourcing that either to allow you to continue to do that without adding any fixed costs into your business as well. Does that make sense? It does. Um, not all practices uh, provide payroll. A lot do, but not all of them do. So if I'm sort of mainly providing bookkeeping accounts and tax production work, which piece of that journey would I start by outsourcing to see whether it can work for my practice? Probably I'd say the less riskiest areas of, um, of the business, which you, which you um, seem deemed fit for that really. So certain obviously practices um, have various different um, levels of risk with um, various different services that they provide. So 
Um, depending on what you consider the less riskiest, I'd start from the bottom and then take small steps. So con consider them like mini projects as you go forward. It could be the bookkeeping function. Um, so just, you know, the trial balances and the manual data entry work could be outsourced, um, allowing you then to obviously then produce the final set of accounts and oversee the rest of it. Um, the need to take it offline, email it to them, um, or via document sharing, et cetera. It can be done through systems um, and, and provide them various different levels of access control as well. So you maintain that element of control. And if I wanted to test within my practice uh, some of the lower risk jobs that might I, I might have and think about giving those to an outsourcer to see how we get on, are there any criteria I might think about when picking those specific jobs, apart from low risk, which is, again, it's a bit of a broad bucket. Mm -hmm. you know, how would I go about saying, well, OK, we're going to try and send this to an outsourcer and see how they get on? Um, a lot of our clients have actually, it's word of mouth and referrals um, that they've, they've kind of piggybacked off to say, hey, has this worked for them? And what they've done is then had that conversation um, with with. Uh, the outsourcing partner and and sort of um, sort of shaking hands on that perspective. So what I would potentially say is, does the culture fit? Um, do they have very uh, sort of um, similar processes which you, which um, they would align with your practice with, and also any referrals etc. That you can pick up from that, which obviously gives you the assurances that um, you're aligning with the right partner. So I know you've got another slide on how to prepare for outsize, outsourcing. So maybe we could have a little think about that. Um, one of the main concerns about using outsourcers is, number one, the quality control and how I would think about that. But number two, how the tech and data security would work to ensure that I'm not falling foul of any working practices. Um, what should I look for if I'm going to appraise an outsourcing partner or company? Uh, what are the types of questions I should be asking them about their tech and data security? So um, I guess really the way you need to look at it is it's an extension of your business, okay, ideally. From, from that perspective, if you treat it like they need to be working within your practice, then it saves you treating them independently where communication, there'll probably be communication gaps, um, uh, I guess really um, dashboards where you want to see what's going on. So effectively, if they can work and dial into your system or probably you know, a, a much more beneficial will be a cloud suite, um, what we allow them to do is actually the practice partner can maintain the element of control there and effectively give them access into their system so they can see 24-7, um, you know, 365, what work they're carrying out, where they're up to and what activities have taken place. Um, a lot of the practice, a lot of the outsourcing companies now um, are ISO 2001, which I'm sure Robert will touch on very shortly. So that gives you a bit of an idea that actually their processes are in place. They've gone through some vigorous aspects to get there in the first place and um, hopefully gives you a bit of assurances going forward. There's one thing that I'd probably say is there's, there's something, there's an analogy called the five W's of outsourcing, so which you need to probably consider before going ahead and pressing the button. One would be, who should I outsource to? Um, the other one would be, why should I outsource it? Um, the other one would be, what should I outsource as well? Um, the, the other one would be when to outsource and where to outsource it. So if you've got answers for any of these, it will allow you to then say, OK, there's a need for me to outsource and particularly then to carry on that and continue that discussion with um, with a potential partner. And do any of your uh, client firms allow the outsourcer to deal directly with their clients or is it by and large the firm is doing all of the client management and email communications and collecting the data and the books and records from the clients and then passing it on to the outsourcing company. Yeah, so the client facing aspect still remains with the partner, um, partner firms, um, obviously uh, the firm itself. Um, it's the back office function, which generally is picked up by the outsourcing company um, to carry out. Um, what that allows you to do is still maintain your, you know, enhance upon your relationship with your customer and your client. But at the same time, you've, you, you know, um, 
But the analogy of working smarter, not harder comes into play here where, you know, you've got an outsourcing partner that will um, deal with the back office function for you, but actually you're staying in control by speaking to the customers and giving them the updates. On this slide, uh, you mentioned being transparent with staff and keeping them informed. Mm. Now, if I've run a, quite a traditional practice and my staff have worked for, for me for a number of years, how would I broach a conversation with them about the fact that I'm now going to effectively take some of their work away and give it to someone we don't know that won't be working in the office with us all remotely, but a totally different company? Um, how do I go about starting that conversation with uh, some of my key personnel? Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting question. Um, personally, <clears throat> I think a lot of it boils down to your company culture and communication. If at the end of the day, the um, your staff is potentially doing the same work day in and day out, there's not really any sort of career progression for them. Okay, so the way that this can be communicated to them is it's not, it's, it's, it's not a replacement for your job. But at the same time, it's allowing for um, the, the practice to, to grow. And in the practice growing, what it allows you to do is also um, come along that train journey with us, where actually your personal progression will also um, be enhanced upon as well and be accelerated. So I've heard many firms have this conversation. And there, there's, um, there's a very interesting stat about a 70-30 split. Okay, so what a lot of companies do is 70% of it, they keep in house and, and they continue to work, but there's always a flex model where 30% they allow to, um, to outsource with the ability that, you know, it allows them to, to, to control that needle a little bit. And um, from what I've seen, once an outsourcing partner has been introduced, actually it's been embraced by a lot of the staff members. If at the outset, though, uh, one of my members of staff says to me, well, what will I be doing then? If you take this work from me and mm -hmm. give it to somebody else, mm -hmm. surely that makes me redundant. What what will I be doing instead? Or are you getting rid of me? Um, not particularly, because the idea of that would be actually, you'd be having those um, performance evaluation conversations with, um, with your staff member. On top of that, you'd be focusing on exact, what areas do they want to go into? What, what would they potentially like to do? And in doing that, it will potentially allow you to give them the reassurances that, okay, now we're going to focus on looking at doing that in the process. So it's, it really just boils down to a, a, a massively communication between yourself and your staff members of where your practice is heading and what plan they play in that as well going forward. Um, and it's, it's, it's worked very well for other companies out there, other practices. But possibly before I broach those conversations, I need to have a think about how I might upskill those personnel who are going to have some of their work whether it's data entry or accounts production effectively carved out of what they're doing mm -hmm. so perhaps think about well do I want them to be talking to clients more often do I want them to be doing more of an analytical review for clients uh, and moving towards getting them to do some of the advice piece rather than just uh, the data piece that they were doing before and probably I need to prepare that before I go down the road of of saying that saying to them right we're using an outsourcer it's going to be beneficial for you uh, there needs to be another piece in there i think before before you have that conversation uh, absolutely um they'll be on that journey with you and i think the the there's a very the casing example that i could bring into play is um making tax digital is about uh, the uh, self-assessment's about to uh, arrive shall we say um there's um potentially four to five times the amount of work that you're going to be looking at carrying out. Um, you have self-assessment season coming up right now as well. Um, the, the general consensus of self-assessment season is we're going to be inundated with insurmountable amounts of work. Now, actually, if you, if you flip it on its head to say, okay, you're going to be focusing and controlling the work that the outsourcing company does, um, it allows you to then focus on maybe upskilling to more of a management kind of aspect um to manage the outsourcing functions that are taking place rather than obviously being the doer in the business you mentioned mtd there uh, which mm. will obviously become uh, an integral process in a firm before i prepare or whilst i'm preparing to maybe hand over to an outsourcer or seek one out which parts of my processes in in my firm or tech should i review 
to make sure that they're working smoothly before I head over to an outsourcer? Um, automation is key for a lot of this. It's getting the data quicker from the client to yourself. Um, once it's into the system, then it allows you to then focus on, okay, what are you going to be doing with that? Okay, whether you insource it and keep it with your customer, um, with your staff, or if you then look at outsourcing it. But once you've got that data there, it will then allow you to make a, to base it on metrics to say, okay, how can you quantify the amount of work that you've got? Have you hit a bottleneck? And if that's the case, the put in some rules and statuses to say this is the amount that will go out, etc., to 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 um, an outsourcing company. Does that necessarily mean that my clients need to be on a cloud? bookkeeping system or can this still be done if I've got clients who aren't suitable for the cloud and who might still be using spreadsheets or paper books and records no you can you can still you can still carry on um that way it's just your I guess really your practice itself your functions won't be enhanced okay so um have you thought about obviously how much time that's taking for you in itself and how much of a cost that's actually being implicated on yourself ideally if you want to move them to the cloud it's a lot secure as well from that perspective because a lot of the cloud um, hosted companies like ourselves we host via um, microsoft azure for example so one of the most reputable companies out there so the data is obviously within our system and allowing you to then obviously focus on what you're going to do with it next Outsourcing has been around for, uh, for, for a good while, certainly since I started in practice, which is a good while ago. At that time, we discounted it because we thought the quality won't be very good, the systems weren't in place, uh, the tech was unreliable, the tech abroad was also unreliable. Why is now a good time for firms to revisit what outsourcing could offer them? I think I think with with cloud suites now on the market and in the industry, what it, it acts, what it allows you to do is the cloud suites act as a gateway and an opener. So it's an enabler for you to focus on um, keeping the data within that system. Um, in previous times, I, I understand what you're saying, Lara, that you know you, you're potentially sending that data via you know high risk email. Um, uh, f functionality, uh, e email process, for example. Nowadays, with with the gateway with Cloud Suite, you're you're the one in control. So you're not having to chase potentially outsourcers to say where are you on this particular job. What the what the suite allows you to do is allow you to maintain that element of control no matter what, and you can see through dashboards exactly where people are up to, and gauge through metrics how well they're doing. And when you're referring to Cloud Suite, what exactly do you mean? So if you look at Capium, for example, we've we've got a suite of services products, so from bookkeeping, payroll, uh, final accounts, uh, all the tax and practice management. So the idea there is, and it's all in the cloud. So by doing that, anybody can access it anywhere in the world as long as you've given them access. And there's various different access control rights as well. So if there was a potential ABC company that you wanted to outsource um, to somebody to get done, you'd literally switch it on, um, give them an access um, and only grant them access to that particular file um, for, for them to be able to work on. In times gone by, I've heard there was a stat about um, desktop software to get fully configured takes about um, 57 hours, believe it or not, okay, to be fully configured up and running for somebody to continue to start working on. With cloud, it allows you within a couple of minutes to get them up and running. If I wanted to sort of move fully to a cloud suite to enable uh, more secure outsourcing, presumably I'd need to sit down in my firm and think about having a policy and a procedure about giving access to that cloud suite what the procedures would, are going to be between my firm and the outsourcing firm and then communicating that to my staff so that everybody's aware of how it's going to work. Absolutely. I think that will a lot of that will be ironed out in your terms and conditions and your statement of work process with, with your outsourcing company, which I'm sure Robert will touch upon very shortly as well. But the idea is they, work, they will potentially work with you um, and to your processes uh, rather than obviously um, them coming in to say, well, this is how we work. Um, and what KPM does will allow you to actually just facilitate it as a platform, as an aggregator to work from the same system. 
Okay, are we ready to go to a poll question? Yes, I think, um, Nyla, if, would it be okay if I pass it across to you, um, if I stop sure. sharing my screen? And that Absolutely. way you can, there we go. I believe the uh, poll question is, um, I, well, I'll leave it to yourself. <laughs> okay, so uh, poll question for our audience, please. How comfortable are you to start all outsourcing with your current software provider? A very comfortable, comfortable enough, not comfortable, not sure. I know it might be that you haven't thought about what your current software provider uh, might be doing in terms of data security and how they might facilitate outsourcing, or you might have already thought about this uh, and be quite happy to start a conversation with an outsourcer. So just another few seconds about how you feel about your tech and whether you're ready to outsource. And if we can have the results, please. Okay, so quite a mixed bag there. Um, we've got quite a small percentage saying they're very comfortable, so uh, quite secure in their systems. Uh, comfortable enough, 32%, so a good third, not comfortable a third, not sure, so quite a wide spread. So I think, you know, the the upshot of that poll is that really tech is something that probably needs to be revisited, either to do a cursory check or to do a deep dive before going over and, and partnering with an outsourcer. And talking about outsourcers, I'm now going uh, to hand over to Robert to talk to us in more depth about working with an outsourcing partner. Robert. Thank you. Uh, just in the process of sharing my screen, uh, are we okay with that, Nyla? Can we see that okay? Yes, looks good. Excellent. So thank you to Sheer. Um, you know, lots to digest uh, from your run through the work of KPM over the last few years. I'll certainly pick up on some of the threads of the comments you made, particularly around outsourcing and how you can use it to drive change management, how you can use outsourcing as a lever towards practice growth and scalability. And I think importantly of all of that, the impact on your people and how you manage that within a practice who may be considering outsourcing. So just a couple of words about me and Inator. Um, as uh, Nyla said in the introductory remarks, I've been working in practice for over 30 years. Uh, the last 10 years of my career, uh, outsourcing uh, was very much you know, part of the, the day job for me. I worked with a number of outsourced providers, some onshore and some offshore. And it quickly became apparent to me, certainly in a, in a practice environment, that the outsourcing needs to be seen as part of your practice's day-to-day -day work. Um, Inator Global, I'm the head of customer experience. I've been with the company for about four or five months now. Uh, we've been around uh, certainly since 2006. And over the last 10 years, we, we've achieved you know, quite stunning growth. Uh, we are one of the leading providers of outsourced services to accountancy practices in the UK. And we have a team of qualified accountants working in India. As you would expect, we work towards the sort of, you know, the accountancy industry, core values of integrity, accountability, ethics, teamwork. Um, and, and I say that because, as Tushir says, you need to see an outsource provider as reflective of the culture and values of your own practice. So it's important we understand that from the outset. In terms of the services we provide and the sectors we serve, um, you know, in a tour, uh, we provide end-to-end -end outsourced accountancy services from the digital bookkeeping uh, described by Nyla in some of our opening remarks and her discussions with Tashir, right through to year-end accounts and everything in between, including taxation, VAT and payroll. And we also provide secretarial services if that's needed as part of your practice management arrangements. And we serve all sorts of accountancy practices from the biggest LLPs right through to sole trader accountants. And we also serve larger businesses looking to outsource their finance functions. So just picking up on some of the context where we are operating it at the moment, 
Uh, you will be aware of some of the macroeconomic factors affecting your practices at the moment. We have a cost of living crisis uh, with you know, driving inflation. Uh, we have government policy implementation. Anyone who's tracked the various chancellor's announcements from national insurance through to IR35, through to changes in corporation tax, there is a lot to deal with as accountants that's being driven by government policy. We also have the economic reset in the aftermath of, aftermath of the pandemic. And I'm sure you're seeing many of your clients now struggling to access finance due to some of the interest rate decisions uh, from the central banks. At the microeconomic level, uh, we see within our practices, salary inflation, uh, which is a, you know, a fact of life for us at the moment. And of, of course, managing workforce expectations, uh, the expectations of, shall we call them, millennial generation, who are looking for more than just an accounting career. They have a, you know, very set thoughts on how their work should contribute uh, towards the wider economy and also wider social fabric of the country. We also see pressure in fees and increased client expectations about what they get for those fees. Uh, they want more for less, frankly. And we are seeing some pressure on the resilience through recruitment and retention issues, and also the scalability of your practice based on client growth. And of course, we continue to see industry disruptors and changing trends in our industry, which all provide an uncertain background to some of the work that we carry out day to day. From the outset, I'd like to highlight some common misconceptions about outsourcing that I'm going to try and address throughout the course of my presentation. You will have heard all of these misconceptions that I believe. Outsourcing doesn't support your business objectives. You're no longer in control of your work when you outsource it. It weakens data security. Staff morale is adversely affected by outsourcing. And we've heard a number of comments from Tashir about what you have to do within your practice to take staff with you when you're considering this option. Outsourcing is expensive and only large businesses can afford it. Uh, well, I will say quite a lot about that in terms of you know, the smaller practices and what they need to do to prepare for outsourcing. From the client side, Clients might not like outsourcing their work. We need to manage that line of communication with clients. And of course, very old chestnuts, time zone, languages and cultural differences are barriers to an effective relationship with an outsourced provider. And of course, as other speakers have said, there are technological changes and in industry trends, and some feel outsourcing can't keep up with that. I'm going to talk about all those throughout the next 10 minutes. What I would say about outsourcing is it can help you manage risk and uncertainty. And my next slides will focus on things like core business activities, how outsourcing can help, how outsourcing helps drive efficiency and reduce your costs. It provides a flexible resourcing that you can scale up based on your practice performance and future plans for growth. It also frees up the capacity of your people and you as a practice manager to engage with clients. It can also help you meet the career expectations of your staff, and it can ensure data integrity and security, which is at the forefront of our thoughts in the aftermath of GDPR, of course. And it also can help you respond to technological and industry trends. Some context around your core business. Outsourced providers serve all sizes of clients, from ad hoc bookkeeping for a single person practice to the largest audits for the big four. Uh, my early career was among uh, sort of you know top six accountancy firms, and we used outsourcing effectively for a lot of our audit and recurring work. So it's there for any size of practice. You will need to carry out due diligence on an outsourced supplier, and this will confirm the suitability of that outsourced supplier to your business and also the cultural fit. So you need to treat an outsourcing contract as you would any other contract that your practice enters into. Outsourcing will free up your capacity to focus on your strategic objectives, not just in the short term to secure maybe a reduction in cost, but also in the medium to longer term to add value to your business as you achieve your growth targets. We heard to share talk about some of the risks around quality. And in my experience, using the right outsource supplier can drive up your quality standards and it can also help you improve service delivery. You can meet your client expectations and you can often exceed them with quicker turnaround times, for instance, on recurring work. 
So how can we increase efficiency and reduce cost? Well, from the outset, contractually, you will control your costs and that will help you gain a competitive advantage, particularly with larger competitors as you increase your efficiency. What you will need to do before even entering into discussions with an outsourced supplier is look at your internal systems, your controls, your processes, and the outcomes that you expect from this relationship. Now, for smaller practices, you may need to buy in some skills to help you here, a business analyst, for instance, or maybe even someone who can negotiate a contract or prepare legal contracts for you. But I can assure you that that initial investment does bring learning to your practice that you can draw on as time goes on. Uh, so there may be some upfront costs, but you can certainly get the benefit of those costs pretty quickly. As volumes increase, unit costs will reduce. Uh, so over time, as you increase the use of your outsourced suppliers, you will see a reduction in your unit costs and an impact on your bottom line. With the agreed service delivery and turn of road times contractually, you're in control of what the outsourced provider actually does for you. And as Tashir said, through the KPM platform, you can actually track uh, the work that the outsourced provider completes, much as you would inside your own practice as it's completed by your own people. And you can help this whole uh, sort of business analysis part of the equation, streamline your internal process, processes and document management. And a good outsourced provider will help you with that because they've been through this many times with other clients and they could point out some of the good practices they've picked up over time and transfer them to you. We've heard about making tax digital uh, in a number of uh, the comments from, from other presenters. Automation is already driving the way you operate and communicate with clients. You will have automatic emails, you will have uh, you, you sort of a, you know, a, alerts for your clients that a VAT return is due or in due course, uh, when uh, NTD for ITSA is introduced, you will need to communicate much more regularly with the clients affected. Outsourcing underpins these recurring tasks and recurring communications with your clients. It's also a flexible resource. You can use this to manage your peaks of work uh, in the self-assessment season we see at the moment, and also when deadlines are looming. You can also introduce variations to contracts to eliminate your backlog of work. Um, my most recent experience in practice was with the cloud accounting firm Crunch, and we successfully enlisted uh, an outsourced provider overseas uh, to eliminate a backlog of work that had built, built, built up over a number of years, just simply because of our success. Uh, we just couldn't handle it in-house, so outsource was the only solution for us. And that additional capacity means you can widen the scope of services offered to clients. And that can be from the recurring bookkeeping that the outsource provider will do for you, the payroll uh, services that you know, accountancy practices often find difficult to deliver, and also those advisory services that you never quite feel you have the time to talk to your clients about. You will find you have the capacity to talk to clients at a more detailed level and understand their businesses. And of course, outsourcing is easily scalable and it can reflect your business growth plans. Now, client service and engagement clients, um, and I would echo to Shear's word around this, you remain the key contact for your client relationship, and you will have that more time that I mentioned to understand these clients, their businesses, and upsell services. Where you will use the outsource provider is for those recurring tasks. Now, there was a question from Nyla about whether the outsourced provider would contact your clients. That is entirely up to you. Um, many outsourced providers contact clients by email if they need to progress a piece of work, for instance. Uh, they will rarely uh, make a phone call, but you can make those arrangements. If you're comfortable with an outsourced provider talking to your clients, it does happen. Now, outsourced providers tend to work to UK time zones. So you can have your meetings with them, the general, uh, you know, nine to six days that, that we work and they can contact clients within those uh, sort of timescales as well. A good thing about outsourced providers is they will have experts on hand to advise their people on UK culture. They will know when public holidays are looming uh, they will know about political developments. 
and popular culture. So the EUSO staff, especially offshore, will certainly understand uh, the UK culture and you know what, what's looming you know, in terms of uh, things that are on our minds, uh, maybe outside of work. Uh, most providers, Editor Global certainly does have a UK headquarters and customer experience professionals on hand who are based in the UK, and, and certainly that, that's part of my role for Editor Global. Uh, most of your engagement letters will contain clauses to facilitate the outsourcing of work. So your clients will be comfortable uh, with the concept of their work being carried out by someone outside of your practice. Um, if your engagement letters don't have clauses like that, you can very quickly update them and just let your clients know why you're introducing these clauses. Now, one of the important threads of the discussion today is how you manage people's expectations in your practice. You need to be clear from the outset that outsourcing is not a threat. It's an essential business solution and it's part of your operating framework. Where I have seen outsourcing go wrong is when you outsource work and forget all about it and then three or four weeks later you think, oh, where is that work? It needs to be part of the day-to-day -day operating framework of your practice and subject to clear standards and turnaround times. You can update your internal processes to ensure transparency so that management within your practice understands what is being completed outside of the practice by an offshore provider and internally. Those processes should, should really measure how those two street work streams measure up. It also helps you avoid the expensive resourcing mistakes. And Nyla's opening remarks, uh, she talked about some of the pressures around recruitment, retention, career expectations. And I think we've all, on reflection, made some expensive resourcing mistakes when we maybe rushed into a decision uh, because we, we didn't have the capacity at the time to deliver the workload that it demanded. When you do have workforce, workforce issues to resolve, uh, you know, maybe staff are, are just moving on. This is natural uh, between accountancy practices. They're looking for career development, different experiences. Outsourcing can increase your resilience to deal with those sorts of emerging issues. And it can also benefit staff morale by contracting out recurring tasks. Um, certainly, I've thought twice about having conversations with staff about carrying out recurring bookkeeping that they've been doing for a number of months, maybe preparing the same payroll that they have been for, for years sometimes. Uh, you can engage staff and say, look, by outsourcing some of these recurring tasks, you have the time to prefer, pursue your professional development and start doing some of the more interesting style of work talking to clients at a more detailed level and delivering those advisory services that you sometimes never found the time to deliver. At the forefront of our minds is data security and data integrity. Uh, we've all been dealing with the need to comply with GDPR and most outsource outsource providers will be fully GDPR compliant. Many go that step further and they seek ISL 27001 accreditation. Uh, you can seek evidence of that as part of your due diligence um, to, to make sure that you're satisfied that your data is secure. Outsourcing, of course, needs to be integrated with your existing data security and data protection protocols uh, so that if you do get a freedom of information request, for instance, or a right to be forgotten request, then you can talk to your outsource provider about how to deal with these requests. And of course, using cloud-based solutions means that data cannot be downloaded um, by your, your outsource provider. They, they're using your UK servers and it's accessed securely. If you don't use cloud-based solutions, uh, then there are desktop options, but again, those will all be through password protocols and password protected. But most outs outsource providers work most effectively using cloud-based solutions. All are comfortable with major softwares. You could, in due course, arrange a site visit uh, to see what security arrangements are in place at your outsource provider. Um, if it's offshore, in my experience, they're delighted to see you. Uh, they like to show off their business and the staff who are working on your day-to-day -day work. And you will also receive assurances around recording devices, smartphones, and many have CCTV, uh, just to make sure uh, that you know, the whole environment 
that your work is carried out in is secure. At the contractual level, uh, you will typically still be the data controller for GDPR, and you will be using the outsourced company as the data processor. So some of the trends uh, that we're all seeing over the last few years that outsourcing has helped many of our clients address is around cloud accounting. It's the most secure and it's the most effective way to deliver the work for your practice using an outsource provider. Uh, advances in accounting software and end-to-end -end arrangements or with new plugins, uh, your outsourcing provider will often be ahead of the game and will understand these developments before you. And they can make recommendations to help you if that's what you're looking for. Uh, we have the remote working uh, sort of aspirations of staff at the moment. Uh, they may want to be in the office two or three days and work remotely, um, you know, for the other day or two. Um, outsourcing supports that by making you look at your internal processes, your structures, your platforms to enable remote working for your own people. Uh, artificial intelligence for accounting, again, linked to software developments. Uh, your, your outsource provider will be very comfortable with that. Uh, some of the automated bookkeeping we've seen, bank feeds, uh, all that sort of uh, sort of developments, your outsource provider will be ahead of the game on that as well. And if you're thinking about sort of outsourcing audit services, uh, you, the best outsource providers are very familiar with blockchain, te blockchain technology and how to deliver on that. So on to my final couple of slides. Certainly, in my experience uh, regarding outsourcing, it does help your practice increase efficiencies and it will reduce your costs and increase your bottom line. Uh, when used effectively over a period of time, it will add value to your practice and it allows you to respond quickly to emerging situations. Recurring tasks will be removed from your day-to-day -day operations and that will really allow you to focus on your clients and how to develop your people so that their career aspirations are met. And looking ahead to your sort of medium to longer term objectives for your practice, uh, you should always consider how outsourcing can help you scale. Outsourcing should always be integrated with your operating, enhancement, uh, your operating framework, and it can actually enhance it by making you look critically at those systems and processes which might not be as efficient as you may think. So just a final couple of words about NSCR uh, Global. Uh, we have been around since 2006, and we have a truly remote workforce of qualified accountants, and we provide the expertise and quality services your accountancy business will need. Um, and using the most secure technologies, we can help you reduce business risk, your operating costs, increase your efficiency and margins, improve your client, fa uh, client satisfaction, and also drive up your quality standards. So final slide from me. Um, if you do want to have an informal discussion, please feel free to contact me. My email address is on the screen or contact us directly um, at the Hello at Inatour Global email. You can visit our website as well uh, to get a feel for some of the services that we are providing at the moment. For some of you who prefer more traditional uh, communication routes, uh, you can give us a telephone call. Uh, our phone number is there. Or if you wish to contact me, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, so delighted to hear from you. So that concludes my side of the presentation. Uh, we are going to move to a second poll. Um, and this is designed to see whether the mood has shifted uh, since the original poll when we had around 64% of you were not too comfortable or not sure about how your existing software uh, could help support outsourcing. Uh, so, Lana, I believe you're going to put the poll on the screen now. I'll move to the final slide of the presentation and hand over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. So our final poll question today is, having attended the webinar, how likely are you to outsource work to an offshore supplier in the next 12 months? Very likely, it's a possibility, unlikely or not at all. So just a few moments to answer this and then we'll have a little bit of time left to take any of your questions. If you do have a question, please type it into the Q&A box. Just a couple of seconds. Thank you. And the results are 
quite positive, so very likely 20%, possibility 57%, unlikely 23%, so it's not for everybody, but nobody's saying not at all. So I think that's very positive. Um, we do have a couple of time for a couple of questions. We had a question for you, Robert, which city or cities uh, does Inatal Global get its work outsourced from? So I think that means which cities, uh, where, do, where does the work go? Yeah, to be yeah. done, um, I think. Our, our main office is based uh, sort of northwest of Mumbai in Ahmedabad, um, and we have around you know 100 to 150 professionals uh, working out of various sites in that location. Okay, so Mumbai and uh, Ahmedabad. Yeah. Um, and we've got a question that might be a little bit tricky to answer. I don't know if this is one for to share or Robert or both. What are the typical costs involved? So are there any typical costs that you could quote and give an indication or is that going to be too difficult yeah if, if you make a if you make a connection with me i can uh, share our rate cards uh, i won't go through it all at the moment uh, okay. but i would say typically our costs are about 50 percent less than you would pay in the uk um of course it varies by uh, service uh, you know a bookkeeping service um uh, is obviously a lower hourly cost than a qualified accountant service and our senior accountant and our tax services. So it's the whole range of pricing that you would expect uh, to see. So is it generally uh, priced on an hourly rate? Yeah, we have ad hoc services and we provide a full-time equivalent where you control the resource um, if that's yeah. what your practice needs. Um, or if you're not quite ready for a full time, we have half time equivalents as well. So the full range of uh, pricing and activity that you would expect. Uh, and a quick question for you to share, how quickly do you think you could get up and running if you wanted to outsource? So between making the decision to outsource and actually be outsourcing work to a partner, what do you think that time frame should look like? Um, for, from a technology perspective, it, as I mentioned earlier on, Nyla, it takes a couple of minutes to set up access um, with, a, with, with a unique email address for, for your partner. So um, getting them up and running from our side takes a couple of minutes. They've got a password and then away they go. Um, as Robert mentioned, a lot of the outsourcing companies are um, well versed with KPM. So it's not a case that you know we need any training, particular training from that perspective either. Okay, and final question for you, Robert. What do you think are the main risks or challenges to setting up a successful outsourcing arrangement? You know, why does it, why can it go wrong? Yeah, I think that, you know, the main risk is from the outset, if you haven't carried out the due diligence that you need to on a potential supplier. Um, you should always look at two or three suppliers and just hear what they've got to say and sort of compare and contrast, uh, you know, what they're offering. Um, I think make sure they are a, a cultural fit uh, with, with your practice. Uh, certainly I've found talking to various outsource suppliers, some you feel are absolutely reflective of your culture values and others uh, not so much. And, and that's just life. So step one, make sure you carry out that due diligence. Once you have the supplier in place, then it's really important that you see it as part of your operating framework. Uh, you cannot see it as, as outside of your organization. Uh, that will be sort of doomed to failure from the outset. So I think those two steps really help you manage some of the main risks around that outsource supplier. So really you're interviewing or tendering for the process and when you, are there any key points of due diligence that you think a firm should focus on? Yeah, I think, you know, as you would with any supplier, you know, get their last three years of accounts understand uh, you know how sustainable the business model is seek references uh, from some of the clients um, and talk to them directly about their experience with the outsourced supplier um, and understand you know how long you want to be in the relationship for is it just to clear a backlog of work it's sort of you know you know quick and over um, or are you looking for that longer term relationship that, that really can help with your practice sustainability and very final question, we've had a question from a member, are you looking for more firms in India to carry out outsourcing work? Uh, I, I think that's a question that's above my pay station. Okay, uh, but fair enough. <laughs> uh, we, can, uh, we can certainly look at that if they want to uh, connect with me on LinkedIn or, or send me a, a direct mail. Very good.
Uh, that brings us to the end of today's webinar. We will be posting some links to the slides and some other useful links in the chat box now. Uh, these will also be sent out in the post event email that in will include an on demand link to a recording of this webinar. I would like to thank Tashir Patel and Robert Grant for their insight and advice. And I'd like to thank you, our listeners, for your time and for your questions. I hope you've found this session useful. A short feedback survey will pop up on your screen after the webinar finishes. Please do complete this as your feedback is very important to us and helps us to shape future events. As I've said, the webinar has been recorded and you'll get a link to the on-demand recording tomorrow. I've been Nyla Khan. Thank you and good afternoon. <laughs>